Hey, hello. So, as uh, as promised, a bit later than uh, planned, the teardown of uh, one of these big boys, the Neo 10. So, uh, I was wondering if I would go the safe route or the let's see where it goes route. I'll choose the last one. So uh, my initial idea was to like uh, have some threaded rod in here to be sure it just not fucks off on me. But uh, apparently I don't have any threaded rod, so just have to drill them out. I might put some wood underneath here before I screw up my countertop. It is already kind of screwed, so. So we got some changing lighting, which is rather nice. So I drilled out these already. I hope I can remove these still without it like really going all over the place. Ooh, Ooh there's some room now. Okay, this one as well. Hopefully it stays together. Still holding. So time to put some thicker stuff in there. First, I'm gonna do these two. These are from the connector. I'm standing in the light. This is stuff you have to do in your kitchen. There we go. I hope it doesn't wander off. I feel it wants to move this way. I'll let it. Do your thing. Well, that was easy. That wasn't at all as hard as I would imagine. Ha! Huh. So they... So they did use this weird ass technique. Damn, I want some coffee. Yeah, I might be... Uh, I'll, I'll make some coffee before I uh, we dive into this. So, I got my coffee. Ow! And, uh, well, the light I use at the moment is sunlight, as you can see, which changes over time. And, well, I cannot shut it off, so... Mmm. Ah, coffee, nice. So, this is the BNG Neo 10. Um, you might be, if you've ever looked at it, uh, seen this corrugation in the as well as in the patent as in on the I believe the parts express side there's a cutout where you can see the corrugation and yes it is actually there um, the idea is that it stops like resonances of the membrane itself and they well they tell you uh, about using corrugation completely that will be the best but they also mention which is quite nice because I got the same well not feeling I have the same experience and it's quite logic why if you would corrugate the whole thing then the membrane would be much thicker so your excursion is limited but uh, there are a few things that are uh, popping out one is the glue is 
not holding anymore. That's one. And I'm pretty sure this one was not working anymore. And uh, as you might be able to see here, you can see uh, some solder, which is weird. Because the connector is on the back side. And it is soldered onto the foil here. But if you heat it up, if you use too much heat soldering these, uh, you will fuck up this connection and that's what's happening with most of them They warn you about it in the manual as well, but the yeah, it's quite a pricey speaker that's Gone then it's not usable anymore Another thing that is quite clear is that they didn't take well, It's hard to see I can see it with the naked eye, but the, etch, the etching of this coil is not as neat. It almost shorts out at some places. Let me see if I can kind of make that visible somehow. You see? Like here. Almost shorts out. It has these... So this well, it might be a Monday build. I have the same problems every now and then. Usually if it measures okay, I don't really care. Uh, apparently they didn't either care. But this is a, a commercial product, so might be different. Yeah, some pieces are almost shorted out. Let's see if we can get a reading uh, on the foil. I think the coil itself is still uh, okay. I think this one is not, it's not able to save this one. No. <laughs> they added this uh, almost transparent tape on top of it, as they did here. Uh, on the Neo uh, PDR they also had it here, on the edges. They might have actually, yes they still have it here. Now one fun thing about the corrugation is uh, the tension is still rather high. So how did they do the corrugation here? By the looks of it, they used a lot of sideways pressure or uh, tension. So this is still tensioned rather hard. But still able to have some sort of corrugation here. I mean, if you tension it in this direction really hard, the corrugation, you will pull it out. And it's flat again. In this case, they left a piece here without aluminium foil. So the foil can sort of kind of get get into the corrugation uh, mode, <laughs> and the corrugation is made of like small pieces of aluminium. I I'm gonna blow my nose because it's quite annoying doing to like uh, every time. One second. Caliper to the rescue. Pop. I might have to remove one of this. Uh, Weird ass fabric that I still don't have a clue what it is. I, I'll i show you my collection so far. I bought as well as I received some and uh, a few people said, I think it's this stuff. And they sent me a link so I bought it. But it's something else. <laughs> it's every time something else. So I got a whole collection I'll show you later on. Let's get some of it off. I, I don't think I'm gonna use this one ever again. So. Or ever again, I never used it. So half of it will be staying on. So this is it. It is it's quite stringy. And what I bought, the latest addition to my collection, is this, which looks different. I think this might even be glass fiber. 
it's too thick as well. Uh, the kind of waviness does look more like the the stuff used in the Neo PDR3, but this is way too thick, and I think this is this might be glass fire because it's really stiff as well. This is like really fluffy. Still, I don't know what it is. Annoying. But so we can see the magnets clip more clearly. Yeah, so they are 4.7 millimeter wide. I think it might be a non-metric size, a 3.4 thick. Rather hefty magnets. What would be the X-Max? That's another uh, question. That one is harder to figure out. So let me get something. So I grab this. This is a piece of HPL, which should be four uh, four millimeters. No, no, three point eight six. So let's use that. Six point one five. Six point one five minus three point eight five. Two point three millimeter X max. Sort of. So that's quite a lot. But this thing has quite a lot of power as well. I think you will never reach that X Max though because it's rather hefty tensioned again. So there's not much to see here, it's just the usual loads of magnets, some some of the the magic stuff. That I still don't know what it is. So it's all in the membrane, that's the only interesting part, I guess. And it's also not, except for this corrugation thing, it is just a normal panel, as you may expect. Uh, as per usual, they have like this weird ass. This weird ass track. Normally, you would have the connection here and one here. They changed it up, and I guess because uh, th in this way, you have the connections in the middle of the coil. So there, there is one track that does still something and I hear my autofocus so probably it's not very nicely in focus but yeah it is as you might expect this is also here this is also a weird thing I'm not sure if you can see that but that track this one is even thinner than the rest of the tracks and the power handling is as good as this part here so they have wider tracks here and then they feed it with a tiny track kind of weird but then the question is do they corrugate after no they corrugate before they um, stretch in you can see the corrugations here as well and on the end as well so they etch the foil corrugate the sides then like tension the shit out of it mostly in this direction then glue it down and then you have uh, this and then you add the I think it was polypropylene tape the a bit hazy tape over the contacts um, over the turns here at the edge where the spacer stops and they do the same over here where the rivets are in the end then they use a soldering iron to poke holes and then rip it the whole shit together 
The only thing I wonder about is, uh, you can see it here. This is quite hard to see. I'll see if I can capture it. Let me play with the light a little bit. It's really hard to see, but yeah, I can see it now, but yeah, there. So here you can see a little bit of a wobble. You see, just beside the corrugation. And that's no uh, wonder. I mean, this is like bubbly, bubbly, bubbly corrugated. And then somehow it has to transform to flat. But yeah, I mean, this is using more mylar than here. So it has to come from somewhere. So they probably stretched up this stuff by corrugation. But you can see, you know, the transition from uh, corrugated to flat. It leaves this wobbly, not really corrugated, but just not like perfectly tensioned. You can get rid of this if you stretch it in this direction, but you might lose this corrugation as well. So potentially, I think that's not all this wobbly wobbly here on this track here might even induce resonances easier than having it straight stretched. But that's just my um, opinion. I mean, if you normally, if you have in a membrane something that is a little bit floppy like that, it will resonate and you will hear it. So that's why it might be might be a problem here it might as well be because it lost some you know because it's not like perfectly glued everywhere and see if the different the other side has it as well i think yeah yeah so i don't know i don't think i don't think this is really useful to be honest I think it's more interesting to weight this part down. If you want to lower resonance, if you only want to lower the resonance so you make a bigger panel but does, you don't want to drive it all, you can weight this down. It doesn't hurt your efficiency because it's this part that is doing the playing. This is hardly moving. So put something on there, I think. It's less work than corrugated and having to deal with um, pieces that are a bit floppy. Or make a new foil for this one, see what it does. That might be the easiest task. Although I'm still not sure what kind of glue they use because uh, you see there isn't much glue here but it holds this really high tensioned foil. And I'm saying it wrong also because this is the part where there is no foil, so it's this part. But because of the steel is like banded like this, it's only this part to the edge that is touching the foil. So a really tiny piece that make makes contact to the foil and still it, it holds its tension. So I don't know what kind of glue they used, maybe some sort of epoxy or something. I mean, I'm pretty sure epoxy uh, will will handle that, but the, the you know the hardening time or drying time, set time, is rather high if you want to produce these like fast and a lot of them. That's why I use this uh, 30 and F because it's contact adhesive. It's rather instant. But. Maybe they made a lot of them together and just, you know, 24 hours uh, sitting there is no problem. I don't know. Yeah, can, you can see here the glue. It is some sort of, it's really shiny and it's really hard. You see, really shiny glue.
I think it's a uh, might be po polyurethane or epoxy, one of the two. But both are not really fast, really slow glues. Here's a little bit brownish coloration, which polyurethane tends to do. Here as well, but it might as well be um, a little bit of rust. <laughs> I cut it out. Much easier. So here we got a shiny side. And I can feel this is the mylar or whatever stuff they used side. So it's no wonder that I measure uh, nothing there. On this side, I don't measure anything either. Sorry to bother you with this, but I'm... Oh, if I push really hard, I do. You know, like if I puncture it, I do. But just like this, I don't measure anything. And if I scrape it, I demolish it. It's not looking very nice, but I do get a result. So, there is something on there. And I don't know what it is. But it might help them to foil a little bit more than uh, it normally uh, is from its, well, on its own. So that's good to know. I'm gonna save this sample for whatever. Well, okay, I know there is something on here. And that's all I need to know, actually, so. And we can hear, this is the sound of the foil, which is... It is indeed not as noisy as you might expect. It's also quite heavy. I might be able to measure it. That's how heavy it is, I think. I'm gonna add this much of tape. So it's not like making it uh, five times as heavy. Zero point eight seven grams. That's insane heavy. No, of course it's not, but yeah, zero point nine. Almost a gram. Well, it, it feels, it's not heavy, but it feels rather heavy compared to other forms I used or use. But it's also mostly the aluminium, aluminium of course. Well, so far for the Neo 10 and uh, well, uh, I'm gonna check if I'm able to connect some wires to it, but I, I think it is a lost cause to be honest. Because uh, yeah. The only aluminium that is maybe solderable is not on top of a spacer, so I will like poke holes in the foil, I guess, when trying to solder it. So I think this is the end of the Neo 10. But uh, just keep in mind if you buy these, use take on connectors and not solder them because you might end up with this problem. See ya!